I'm Mary. And I'm Joe. And, and we're, we're Book Buds. Buds. Today we're going to be talking about Barbara Delinsky. This is her right here. I love Barbara. I started reading her years ago. She writes romance novels. They make my heart feel happy. If I could just talk to you about her in general, I would. She's just so fabulous. If you enjoy romance novels and you haven't read Barbara Delinsky, I highly, highly recommend her. Out of all the different types of romance that I've read, she is by far my favorite. She writes a beautiful story. You have a nice beginning, middle, and end, an evolution in character. People's personalities are developing and becoming stronger. They're overcoming things. And all the while, they're reconnecting with a, you know, a cute boy from their hometown that they're just returning to, <laughs> or like an old flame that died, and they re-embrace them. Um, I absolutely love these stories. So before my current favorite genre, which is fantasy, young adult fiction, I absolutely loved romance novels and I couldn't get enough of these because they just make me feel happy when I read them. And when I read, I like to feel happy. Some people will, will review a book like this and say, it's so predictable, you know, it's the cheesy same kind of romance stuff. But hey, I like the cheesy same kind of romance stuff. If that's what makes you happy, then that's what you should be reading. It really, really does make me happy. So let me see, her books are usually like, I wanna say like 350 pages long. Yeah, like about exactly that. <laughs> so this is like my ideal length of a book. I like that length as well. You get a really good Perfect. story in a yeah. 350 page book. Um, you get committed to it, you love your characters, you want good things to happen for them, and Barbara always makes good things happen for her characters. Does she do a series or just standalones? Honestly, I can't remember right now. Another author that I also love that's similar is Susan Wiggs, and I know for sure Susan Wiggs does like a three kind of like something chronicles or something like that. Mm. Um, I don't remember if Barbara has done something like that. So The Summer I Dared was the first one that I read of Barbara Jelinski's a long time ago and absolutely loved it. It takes place, all of her stories take place in like a beachy area or like a small town somewhere. This one takes place in an island off the coast of Maine. It's about a 40 year old woman who's married to somebody who's very distant. There's a lot of expectations on her and her family. Um, she's always very loyal and obedient and doing the right thing, but then she survives a traumatic boating accident and facing death and having that experience kind of like shifts her life and her priorities. And so she starts thinking about taking care of herself differently and you know prioritizing herself and making some brave choices for who she should be as a person. Um, and then there's the love interest that comes along in all of her books that you just want her to be with and they live happily ever after. Excellent feel good book. I highly recommend it. Are they always happy endings? Yes. They have to be. <laughs> have to be. I don't really enjoy the ones that are oh, right, not. Right, right, <laughs> right. So you wouldn't love it if it wasn't. I wouldn't. All right. The next one I'm going to talk about today is her most recent novel. This one came out in 2020. As soon as it came out, I read it. Even though I've been in a streak of just reading fantasy stuff, I put that down and I picked this up because I'm true to Barbara Delinsky. I love her. Go back to your roots, Mary. <laughs> Absolutely. So this one takes place in um, Rhode Island. I love New England settings. Maine, Rhode Island. Yeah, she grew up in Maine, so that's why a lot of okay. them are based around in that area. Stephen King. Yeah. Um, so her family has to come home and it's about three sisters coming back to the same beach, beachy area um, and they have some memories that are problematic, some secrets, some trauma that they all need to work through. And she brings her teenage daughter with her back to this family, to her family roots. And I, I think if I remember correctly, her teenager hadn't even met some of the family and didn't know all of the family stuff. So it was like um, a real bonding moment for her as well. So the main character is Mallory, and when she goes back home, this town, she has her, the, her first love lives in this town still. So it's always nice when your first love lives there and there's something to rekindle. Um, and they, as she's dealing with her family drama and she's resolving some of these secrets and lies and issues that they've got to work through, then she's kindling something with this guy and healing some things there as well. So they live happily ever after. Yay! Of course. They have to! Be happy! They have to. You have to be happy! <laughs> they make me happy. <laughs> we trade? Switch. Next we have Suddenly. This one came out in the 90s and takes place in a small town in Vermont. The main character in this one is Paige and she's a 31 year old pediatrician and her best friend commits suicide. And she's totally shattered and she has to take care of her best friend's baby who has now been left without a parent. So as things get dark and she's feeling discouraged, she needs to do some work on herself and her life. Noah enters the scene. He helps her to get through some of these struggles and rekindles something magical and wonderful right there. Um, and happily ever after once again. So, good book. Enter okay. Noah. <laughs> <laughs> Noah's gonna make it all better. 
All right, so Joe. Yes. When I started to absolutely love Barbara Delinsky, I said, well, I have to read every single one of her books, right? And when you find an author you love, like you assume maybe they're all exactly the same, right? So I pulled this one off the shelf and it's thinner. <laughs> it's not 350 pages. This one is 249 pages. I'm like, all right, that's a little different. Okay. It was written in 1987. So apparently it was one of her oh. early ones. So maybe that's what also makes it different. But turns out this has a very different style of story. You get right to the sexual tension in this book right away. There's um, things in here maybe that you might feel are like sexual harassment and whatnot <laughs> before the relationship develops. Oh, okay. This is about Corinne who gets involved with her boss's friend. Um, they were advised not to get together because they have nothing in common. So it was like a taboo relationship, but all that tension that was there drew them together. And then, you know, we've got some sex scenes in here. <laughs> The more sex scenes, the better. How many were there? <laughs> I honestly don't remember. I read this one a while ago. So these other books, there's really not a lot of sex in these other books. It's more story, relationship building, and all of that. This book, I'd say, is your go-to if you want more sex and less relationship story stuff going on in there. Joe likes the idea of this one. This is the one. Start <laughs> so, here, folks. I don't even know if I said the title. This one's called Cardinal Rules. So if you're looking for something romantic and heartwarming to read, check out Barbara Delinsky. I promise you, she just really writes wonderful stuff. And if you're enjoying Book Buds, give us a thumbs up. And share us with your friends. And subscribe to our channel, Book Buds! I don't remember, I read this one a while ago. but in <laughs> No, not in 87. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Why, how old were you in 87? Um, nine. <laughs> you were? <laughs> oh, I thought you were older than that, Mary. <laughs> Thanks, Joe. <laughs> How old was I in 87? Like two. <laughs> five. I was five. Um, yeah, you can't read Barbara Dublinsky at nine. No, you can't. Love, romance, and lots of sex.